Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Ace Attorney, uh, the, the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. Thank you guys for watching, I hope that you guys are enjoying this. So, we finished the last case a couple days ago, and I've been reading a lot of your comments, and a lot of you guys said the last case is actually considered the worst case in the game, but you guys told me that the fourth case, which we're going to be doing now, it's the final case in, in this, uh, the first game in this uh, trilogy here, that this case, the fourth one, is apparently the best in the game. And you, a lot of you guys told me that I'm going to really enjoy it. But anyways, um, let's play it here. Let's continue from where he left off. Turnabout Succession. a Day 1 Investigation. Day 1. Let's see what this is going to be. What kind of murder case is this going to be? And that is the whole truth of this case. Mason System. In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of these last seven long years. Nothing happens by chance. All is connected. And now, you stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story. Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. Is that Kristoff? It looks like Kristoff. What is this about? October 7, 10, 37 a.m. Write anything agency. Hey Apollo, look on TV. Look, look. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of busy. Whoa, look at that. He's the last grammary. All right, amazing. Apollo, you should be watching this. Ow, 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 what? What? I was writing about our last case in my journal. Lawyers are supposed to write things in records, Apollo, not journals. And why now? The ca that case was three months ago. Hey, it's a long story. I did a lot, you know. I want to vacuum pack the feel of the moment for later. Right now, I'm worrying the crowd uh, by figuring out how Lamoror disappeared. That's right, Uncle Valent did that illusion too. But you're missing him on TV right now. Uh, I was just uh, getting to the good part. I suppose I should watch a little TV of her. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while he's away. What you're now seeing is a rehearsal for the greatest magic show on Earth. Happening right here at our very own Sunshine Coliseum. The Sunshine Coliseum? Hey, that's where the Gaviner's concert was. Oh no, don't tell me there's going to be another murder there. Only three more days until miracles happen here, right before your unbelieving eyes. Legendary troupe uh, Grammary is performing for the first time in seven years. That's going to be great. I'm so there. You and Daddy are coming too. The Legendary Grammaries. If Trucy's real father were still alive, he'd be on that stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. Ticket to the premiere um, showing of Grand Illusion by the Magician Valley Valent Grammarie. So yeah, so the mur there's gonna be another murder, and it's gonna be at the Coliseum again. Uh, you you are here, working hard or hardly working. Oh, it's Phoenix. Hey, how have you been? Hi there, stranger. Not exactly the kind of greeting I'd want to hear from my own uh, kid. Though, uh, he has been gone a long time. Ah, <laughs> how goes it, Trucy? Here, I got a present for you. Yay. Pudding. I love pudding. Oh, it's farm fresh. And not just one pudding, but three whole cups. I'll have to pace myself. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy. You're on a top-secret mission. You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. Ah, <laughs> how right you are. So you still can't tell us what your mission is. Maybe it is time. It has something to do with you anyway. Huh? With me? Oh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission too. Maybe you can be one of those guys. 
a spy. Can I just be a defense attorney? Haha. <laughs> uh, to be honest, telling you about the mission was my whole reason for coming here today. What? Tell me. You've heard of the jurist system, yes? The jurist system? That's right, the new legal system everyone's talking about. Have you heard of it, Apollo? Huh? Uh, maybe? Maybe not as many people are talking about it as I, as I thought. The jurist system, huh? So, Daddy, what's this jurist system thing? Well, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. Well, jury, yeah, it's a people chosen, uh, basically sit in court and decide the, you know, fate of the defendant. They hear, they hear the case, the what the prosecution defense says, and, uh, you know, they make their decision. Uh, but unless it's a trial by judge where there is no jury, um, isn't that uh, those people who sit in court uh, in those old courtroom dramas? The ones who get to decide if a guy's innocent or guilty? You know, Apollo? Only from TV. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? So, yeah, so the thing about that, what's, what's kind of weird is that in the Ace Attorney games, all of the trials, at least in the older games, are all trial by judge. There is no jury. The judge is the one who decides everything. Uh, but uh, in the great, um, uh, the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, uh, it's trial by jury. But that's, but that's in um, London. It's twelve people chosen from the community, right? Well, they're thinking about reviving that system. They're calling the new system the Jurist System. No more doing whatever you like, Your Honor. Well, it's uh. You know, you're, it's not really a new system if you're bringing back the old system. Not quite that harsh. The jurists cooperate with the judge. So yeah, I think that... I, I think a jury system, in my opinion, is always superior to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to a trial by judge. Because a judge is going to look at everything from a legal perspective, I would say. But the jury is going to look at things from a legal perspective, too. But they're going to take other things into consideration that a judge might necessarily um, uh, take. Like, for example, mental state, uh, they might take into account exactly the why the crime was committed, because, um, not a defender of crimes, but, uh, for example, uh, you know, somebody, uh, there might have been somebody that was, like, really, really horrible as somebody, maybe, like, somebody killed somebody's, you know, parent, and then that person kills them in, like, a revenge killing, uh, you know, the jury should be the one to decide that, because if a judge decides on something like that, uh, it's probably going to be, you know, guilty, and it's gonna be, you know, a huge time in prison, but a jury might see things a little bit differently. So that's why it's always better to, you know, be judged by, like, a jury of your peers than being judged by a judge. Uh, not quite that harsh. The jurists cooperate with the judge. They help analyze the case from different angles. Uh, and there will be only six of them under the current proposal, right? Well, you know your stuff, Apollo. <sighs> your findings directly affect the verdict. And sorry, guys, a little tired, but um, hopefully people will start uh, taking the courts a little more seriously now. I feel like I'm on some kind of educational TV show star starring Dr. White. Right. Ah, Dr. White is assignment, true scene. And mascot Apollo, the perfect team. Mascot, hey. So, what is this secret mission? The jury system is my mission, more or less. Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like this system are always risky, Apollo. Too true. Everyone's got an opinion, and they just talk and talk and nothing gets decided. Kind of like you, Apollo. Uh, I'm not that bad, am I? In any case, we're going to give it a shot. A test, if you will. I don't like tests. Well, take a case as a sample and choose six jurists. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Helping how? Well, for one, I'll be chair of the Jurist System Simulated Court Committee. The chair constructs the ideal situation choosing the case, the jurist candidates, even the judge in the courtroom. Wow, it's like you have a real job. I was never that good at the piano, to be honest. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer, I guess. That trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it. The trial simulation, that is. Simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. So what kind of case is the trial simulation about? Well, since it is the first run-through of a new system, I wanted something simple. Good thinking. No sense wearing yourself out on something too serious. True. The case is a murder. Uh, that's not simple. That's not simple at all. Um, by simple, did you mean that the defendant is... Guilty. Yes. Most likely. So, good luck, Apollo. Um, with what? With the trial tomorrow. You're defending, of course. Recall that I said it had something to do with you. Go for it, Apollo. 
It's just a test case anyway, no sweat. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potentially serious sentence. The most serious in a worst case scenario. Ah, you mean the verdict's for real? That's not a test trial. That's a real trial. All the forms have been filled. There's no turning back now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hope you can make room in your schedule. Why am I only hearing about this now? Ah, yes. There was a change this morning. I picked a new case. Uh, A? Something that happened last night. Hey, Apollo. I know you're all excited about that secret mission. But what about this? The Troop Grammary Grand Magic Show. Huh? Oh, right. The card tricks. They're not card tricks. They're grand illusions, miracles, the apocalypse, heaven and earth will shake. So what? That's three all whole days from now. It's at Sunshine Coliseum. Let's go. Let's go today. We can say hi to Uncle Valent. Have fun. What? I can't go by myself? You know, you know I'm not very outgoing. Right. Why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? Oh, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something that he's not telling me. Yippee! Now you can take me to the Colosseum. Uh, I suppose it wouldn't kill me to pop over there. Ah, Grammarie. That reminds me. What's this, Daddy? Isn't that silk hat the Grammarie seal? Consider it a birthday present, uh, Trucy. Thanks. It's great. But... Today isn't my birthday. Hmm. Good point. <laughs> what day is it today, Ap Apollo? Huh? Today? Um, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. Then it's a Recycle Your Plastics present. Yippee! So it's plastic. I've given up trying to understand them. It's much easier that way. So what is it? Can I open it, Daddy? No. Huh? You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Don't open it until then. Well, why didn't you just hold on to it until then? Because that would be uh, the logical thing to do. Envelope for Mr. Wright, do not open until the time is right. An envelope about the grammaries, huh? Hmm. Ah, uh, looky here, a handwritten signature. It says, I can't read it. That seems odd to me. I mean, isn't a signature intended to show ownership? What's the use if no one can read it? Isn't it enough if you can read it on your own? Oh, I never thought of it that way. Are you ready, Apollo? Ready for what? For what? For the true Grammarine Grand Magic Show. It, it, it's not like I'm getting up on stage or anything. What are you talking about, Apollo? You can't enjoy magic if you're not part of what's going on upstage. I'll lend you my spare costume if you need one. Huh? You mean I can't go in this? No. Doesn't get more straightforward than that. Alright, so what uh, case are you going to use? You really want to know, don't you? Of course I do. I mean, I'm going to be defending, aren't I? It all goes well, if all goes on, yes, of course, this is just a test. We wanted everyone to start without preconceptions, a blank slate, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyway? Well, mine. Committee uh, chair, remember? Oh. Well, if you want to know that badly, I suppose, I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good, that's better. But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. What? Then how am I supposed to defend? You let me worry about the details there. Remember, I'm in charge of this trial, all of it. But you don't want it to backfire, do you? Apollo, if I am in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility, for good or for bad. Just do what you can. And don't worry, uh, I know what I'm doing. I hope you do. Uh, all right. I'd recommend going down to the detention center. Your client's waiting for you. You can ask about the scene there. But you just said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Oh, you can talk to your client. If you can get her to talk. Well, time's a wasting. I mean, what do you mean get her to talk? Who's our client? October 7th, detention center, visitor's room. 
That's 20 minutes we've been waiting here. 20 minutes. Maybe I should complain. I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand uh, there pretending he doesn't see us. You know, the minute we get angry, the clients will show. It always works that way. Like shouting a waiter and they're standing right behind you. Oh, guard! Is our client going to be much longer? What are you talking about? Haven't you already started the meeting yet? Huh? Eek! Where'd you come from? So, so that's the same girl that fainted in the courtroom at the beginning. Well, uh, anyway, please have a seat. That was weird. I'm nervous, Apollo. It's a silence. It builds suspense. Why don't you do something, Trucy? You're a magician, aren't you? That's right. Okay. I'm the amazing Mr. Hat. Did she just collapse? Eek. She passed out. Hmm. Miss Magic under Underwear might have been a better bet. That's Magic Panties, Apollo. Introductions. Um, uh, hi. Well, I'm your defense. I really think it has to be fair, you know? Oh, fate, you know? And by fate, I mean destiny. Did you know I'm good with astrology? Tell me, what's your sign? I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, never mind. I just got carried away there. It seems destined to get difficult uh, clients, it seems. Um, so what's your name? Oh right, I'm supposed to introduce myself first. I'm Apollo, Apollo Justice. And I'm Trucy Wright. I know, this is getting nowhere fast. Hey, I know, maybe you can tell us what happened. I'm your defense attorney, after all. Um, anything out of the ordinary happened lately? Well, the other day, this tourist from out of town stopped to ask me directions. Later, Trucy. I feel like I need to ask directions myself here. Well, that was fruitless. Though I think I understand despair a little better now. You did good, Apollo. What's that? Look, she's doing her nails. What? Are nails more important to defense? Is that it? Let's go, Trucy. Okay. Excuse me. What? Could could you could you read this? Um, sure. I feel like a teenager on a first date. What what is going on here? And this is the love letter um that we pass from desk to desk at school. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Apollo. It it's a business card with a name and ad an address. The name is Vera Misham. The address is for Drew Studio. Defendant's business card. The address for Drew Studio is on the front. And you're giving me this card because. Well, looks like we're finished here. I wonder if Drew Studio is the scene of the crime. Let's go find out. Defendant's business card? What a pretty business card. Looks like a postcard almost. And on the back, hmm? Just her name. That seems odd to me. Huh? What does? Why write your name on the front and back of the card? Why use a space in the back for a self-portrait or a caricature? Then people would remember what you look like, too. That's not a bad idea, actually. Here, give me one of your cards, Apollo. She's drawing something. Hey, my uh, hair is not that spiky. Hey, this is the scene of the murder. October 7, Drew Studio. Well, this looks like... It looks like a studio. Well, that's why it's called Drew Studio. What is it? She paints? It's like a life-imitating art, or maybe it's the other way around. But the tape on the ground there, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, looks like we found our crime scene. Apollo, look at all those paintings. Hey, don't touch those. 
It's okay, I'm just looking. Huh, Apollo, look at this one. Looks half finished. You can still um uh see the um rough sketch underneath. But that's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all. Yeah, good point. This is odd. Paint at uh, Drew Studio only half finished. The rough sketch is still visible. All the paintings have a really different style too. Apollo, look at this painting. You can see the rough sketch. Oh, looks like it was only half completed. Huh? That's funny. Do the rough sketch and the finished painting look uh, totally different to you, too? They do, actually. What's that all about? Bit weird. Obtained, only half finished, a rough sketch is still visible. So, um, I don't really know that much about art. If anybody knows in the comments, um, let me know. Uh, but isn't the rough sketch, like, the thing that you start painting with originally? And then you basically just paint over it, uh, when you're done? The rough sketch is, like, right before you start painting. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm sorry, I just don't know much about art. Um, ah, uh, I thought I might find you two here. Emma, long time no see. But well, we can't talk to her. Phoenix said so. Oh. Seems like I run into you far too often. I'll bet I know why you're here, too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow. I've heard about it, sure. So Mr. Wright chose you, huh? We don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist who owns his studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Drew Misham, what a name. Misham. And his daughter was put under arrest. The daughter was accused of murder? Yeah, we just saw her at the detention center. It was funny, though. She seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit murder. You don't say. Not even by poisoning. That's how it was done, you know. Poisoning is a common way to get the job done when the murderer is a woman. M poisoning? Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here with my snickoos. We can't talk to anyone related to the case this time around. Which means we better find out as much as we uh, can here at the scene, or else. So, this um, Drew Misham was some kind of artist? Apparently, did a lot of illustrations for books, I hear. Had a lot of female fans, too, for what it's worth. Oh, well, I guess his stuff is kind of pretty. Like that oil painting over there, for instance. Um, yeah. That wasn't one of his illustrations, actually. Huh? So was a standalone painting or something? Is that what she means? He was an odd bird, Misham. I didn't show his face to the, anyone until the end. What do you mean? To anyone. He was always locked up here in the studio, apparently. His only connection to the outside world was through letters he put in that letter box there. Letters. Do people still write letters? What do you mean, Apollo? I mean, when was the last time you wrote a real letter? Don't most people use email and stuff these days? Not Mr. Misham couldn't stand technology, it seems. He did everything by mail. Maybe he thought that was more artistic, you know? Drew Misham's contact with the outside world is empty. I'm wondering if the killer took any mail. In any case, the only person besides him um, allowed him here was his daughter, Vera. Oh, you mean the killer? The suspect, please. We took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Misham um, and Vera's, basically. Basically? Actually, last night, Mr. Misham gave an interview to a reporter for the first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. His first interview ever. Could you tell us a bit more about what happened the night of the murder? Here's the thing is... Is... When detectives look at murder cases, they're always going to look at family. That's where they're going to start first, because family are closest, and so they, it's the easiest for family to hurt, basically, family. Uh, so they're always going to look at people that are close to you um, first. Whoever's, whoever's close to the victim, that's who detectives are typically going to look at first. However, though, 
because her fingerprints were the only prints that were found in the room besides um, her father's, that does not make her guilty. You know, that's, you can't, I mean, the only thing you're pretty, pretty much proving at that point is you're proving that she was there. But those fingerprints could have been left at any time. They could have been left a week ago, a month ago, uh, you know, really any time. So it's not really proof against her. Um, unless you have, you know, the prints on a murder weapon, that's something different. Um, so this is the mailbox? Huh. So this woman, Vera, she's Mr. Misham's daughter, right? Yep, a real slicky girl ever since she was little. Hardly ever went outside. She did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention center. She was screaming about how she'd die if they took her outside. What? That does sound like a scene. In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for company. Her good luck charm? Apparently, she had this charm that magically gives her the courage to go outside. Why can't I ever get a normal client? But why would a shut-in um, daughter kill her own dad? So, here's the thing. If she... If she never left the apartment, if she never left the studio, and this is like the first time that she's left the studio, that is weird, but that means that she would have seen the killer. Don't look at me. So about the poison, it was found to be in, in his coffee, right? No. Not precisely. Not precisely? What does that mean? It means see for yourself, I think. Like I said, last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. I guess uh, mysterious painters who never go outside make for good articles. And it just so happened that he died the night of his first interview. At around 9 p.m. every uh, night, Vera always made him a cup of coffee. Last night he drank his usual coffee and suddenly became violently ill. He's drinking coffee before he goes to bed. No, I, I could never do that. Um, and died. She poisoned him on the night of his interview. Wouldn't the reporter see? He wasn't near Mr. Misham when she brought her father uh, his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the room. Supposedly, that's why she didn't notice he was there. It was a reporter who called the police, in fact. Wait, but why is she the suspect? If anyone is suspicious, it's the reporter. Yet, the reporter never got near Mr. Misham's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. The coffee? Oh, that's the victim's coffee mug. Aha! So the poison was in, in here. This is my first time seeing a real poison mug of coffee. I would hope so. Poison coffee. Not exactly, actually. What do you mean? No traces of poison were found in the coffee. What? You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself. I'm officially not on your side after all. The victim's last cup of coffee, the side of the cup reads Misham. Hey, look there. That stain doesn't look so healthy, Apollo. That must be the Blue Mountain stuff we've been hearing about. Someone tells me that uh, even Blue Mountain coffee isn't this blue. No, this stain is probably... Hmm, better ask Emma. I bet Emma could help us out here. Don't forget, flattery will get you everywhere, her Apollo. Huh? What are you two whispering about? Well, I was thinking. I mean, what is it um, we always do when we run into you at a crime scene? What is it we always do, scientifically? Ah, you know me too well. Okay. Okay, meaning we can get our scientific now? Oh, I suppose. Just this once. Bring me anything you'll uh, find suspicious and we'll check it out. Present. Um, Emma, about this mug. There's a pale blue, uh, residue on the rim. Hey, uh, the, the, that, what's, well, it's just a rumor. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually blue, Emma. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's leftover from my testing spray. Forensic science, I knew your hobby was behind this somehow, Emma. It's not a hobby. So, what kind of scientific stuff were you up to? 
This spray, that's what it turns blue. It turns blue when it touches poison. So the poison that killed the victim was on this mug? That's right, see? It wasn't in the coffee. The killer applied it to the rim of the mug itself. Wow, science is amazing. It certainly is helpful. Maybe Emma would be willing to help us out a bit more. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. They say flattery will get you everywhere. It's certainly worth talking to her a bit more. About poison analysis. I was afraid you were going to ask about that. See, this solution is used to test for uh, atroquinine. Atro, huh? Atroquinine, the deadly poison found in the autopsy. I wonder if that's a real poison. Uh, uh, I know that spark in her eye. She's getting excited. Best uh, tread lightly. It's one of the most vir virtu uh, virulent um, poisons, but it, it's absorbed into the body is astonishingly slow. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for adverse effects to show. Oh, and guess what? Recent research has shown... Uh, th that's fine, really. We don't need to know all the glory glory details. I think I get it. You just spray this stuff on something you, you want to test, right? Precisely. You can find even the slightest trace of poison with this. I want to try too, Emma. Pretty please? You don't have to ask twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Yay, let's give it a whirl, Apollo. Ah, what are you doing? I was just seeing if I got a reaction off you. <laughs> How is this for a reaction? Never do that again. It's poisonous. Tell that to those hapless witnesses on the stand. Let's just get down to checking out real poison, shall we? That painting, that wasn't finished. The reporter sat here, right? That's what she said. poison. Probably it's somewhere in my face and I'm just missing it. Bad, no reaction there. I'm sure Emma checked out all the likely spots. Wait a second. What is it, Apollo? Did you spray that little desk over there? I don't think so. The spray probably can't reach that far, you know? Let's check it out, just to be sure. Eek! A reaction, Apollo. Ah? Huh? Where? Where? The inside of that cute little frame, look. Well, would you look at that? Nice going, Trucy. I'm known to work magic. 
Never mind that I was the one who found it. Frame measuring uh, 2 inches by 2 inches. Bears trace deadly poison. Atroquinine. Quinine. Why would the inside of that frame have poison on it? It looks like we found the only other place that was poison in any case. Hmm. Looks like you have to take this back part off first to pull a, 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 put a photo inside. I'd, it'd have to be a really small photo to fit in here. True, and that pale bluish stain. Why would there be poison on something like this? Well, there's one obvious reason. Whoever put poison in the coffee rubbed a bit on here, uh, too. That's not very obvious, Trucy. It was found on the little table there. Hmm. Emma, I was wondering if you'd take a look at this. Look, I'm a detective, a detective. You can't just ask me uh, a any old thing I expect an answer, okay? I think you need to be a little more focused in your inquiries, scientific even. Somehow, uh, uh, I knew she'd get around to science. Hey, there's a painting hidden back here. Hey, you're right. What if it's embarrassing somehow and he didn't want anyone to see it? You certainly seem pleased by the possibility. Huh? It's so normal. Wait, that's the same picture as the, um, as the unfinished one. Yeah, it is. The only difference is you... This one's finished. Huh? What is it, Apollo? Well, doesn't this painting look like... Never mind. I better get a professional opinion on this. Found at Drew's studi uh, studio, notably for the large plum in the for uh, foreground. Hey Apollo, this painting, I know it. Huh? Really? It's that story where the old woman is doing the wash in the river, and this giant peach comes uh, floating on down? That might possibly be the strangest thing I've ever heard. Eek, Apollo. That's where the body was. That's the spot where Mr. Drew Misham passed away. He put the coffee mug to his lips the next moment. It's quite a bit of paint on the ground. See that half-painted painting over there? He must have been working on that right up to the moment he died. Wow, a true artist to the end. Already he started a year ago and was procrastinating. I wouldn't mind taking a closer look at those paintings. I just love oils, you know. How they're so thick, is that the word? These paints are all dry. It just surprised um, at how different these all are. Yeah, and what's going on with this half-finished one? It must have been a work in progress. You can still see the rough sketch below. That's what's so weird. The sketch part doesn't really fit the finished part. I noticed. That is weird. Yeah. I imagine this coffee cup was for guests to use. Guests? Did the police already analyze this cup too? Not a trace of poison was found in that cup. So the killer was after Drew Misham alone. Let's take a closer look at this desk here. So this is Drew Misham, and this little girl must be Vera. Yes, they took that uh, some years ago. They look close, a happy little family. Until he arrested his daughter. Ah, look, I was, I was personally against that. Okay, she just didn't seem very suspicious, scientifically speaking. Uh huh. Right. And this is the the poison picture. 
Wonder why there's poison in this tiny frame. Very strange indeed. Wait, I know. I bet it was poison from the time he brought, bought it. Haven't you heard about some kinds of, of green uh, paint being toxic? I don't think they sell that kind anymore, and the poison was atric, uh, qu qu quinine. Anyway, I think she's talking about lead. There used to be lead in paint, and that was toxic. A tiny, mysterious poison frame. What is this? Hmm, something about that, uh, the way that figure is posed. I've seen that pose before. It's you, Apollo. See, you're making, uh, one of your flamboyant gestures. Please, I'm a professional. No, I'm the professional here. I wonder why it's posed like that. Coincidence? Hey, Apollo, what's this feather thingy? Isn't that a pen? Like an old-fashioned quill pen? But it doesn't have a pointy end. That's what, um... That was most likely for sweeping, uh... Detritus off the desk. Wow, you sure know a lot, Emma. Bold and scientific. That's my motto. Exactly, what about... Uh, that was Boulder Scientific. What's this here? The envelope has been opened and resealed. Hmm. Oh, I know how to do that. You take a pot of boiling water and hold the envelope up to the steam. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. You're right. Looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark on this letter is from seven years ago. Seven years ago? Why would someone open a letter, then seal it again? Hmm, I better hang on to this. Found the victim's desk drawer. Appears to have been opened once and resealed. Apollo, look! It's been opened once here. You're right. I wonder if there's some way we can see what's inside. Should I try to get it open and then stick it back shut? Let's not tamper with the evidence, shall we? I've got a better idea. Emma, let's ask her. And look at all this stuff in here. Emma, about this. Oh, th th that. Yes. Um, uh, why that's a bright red envelope. He sure is jumpy. Someone opened this, didn't they? My lips are sealed. Y your lips are sealed? That's a first? You mean, you know what's inside the envelope? Sure, I read it, after all. Ah, you mean you were the one who ripped this open? Ah, please, I would have uh, steamed it open. But she did sneak a, a peek at it, apparently. Know that I have a powerful weapon on my side. Weapon? Yes. The use of tools. Highly specialized tools for information gathering. Tools I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. You should try fla uh, flattering her, Apollo. They say a little praise can open big doors. Never heard that one, but it's a good advice. Let's uh, try talking to her some more. About that envelope we found. I was wondering if you could help us with that tool you were mentioning. <laughs> you want to know about my tool, do you? It's called an x-ray analyzer. X-ray. Like the x-rays you get to the dentist? That's right. At least that's what I call it. Huh? It has a real name. but well, it's much more complicated. The x-ray special... Uh, something. Um, how am I supposed to remember all that? So basically, it lets you see inside things like uh, envelopes. That's right. You're sharp, Trucy. But it's a bit more complicated than that. In practice, of course. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma? Uh, please? Oh, I suppose. Of course, I've already checked out everything suspicious myself. Alright, let's give it a spin, Apollo. What's- uh, Eric? What are you doing? Oh, just seeing if I could, uh, see, see, see through your hair, but it's like lead. Point that at, at me anymore and it might- it might all fall out. Then I wouldn't need an x-ray machine to see through it, huh? <laughs> let's just get down to business, shall we? Right, let's test it on a sample first. It just so happens that I have a lottery ticket here. You set the sample in the device like so. I don't see anything. Patience. Um, there's no need to get all nasty antsy. Look at the right side of the screen. 
That's the layer view of the envelope. Layer view. You've got it set to display the outside of the envelope now, see? Actually, it's quicker to just have you give it a try. We're gonna dial, um, there with... Okay. Or... Right stick for me, would you? That's right, that's how you should uh, choose what depth you want to scan. Hey, I got something. See, that's how you can read the letters on the ticket inside. Cool, huh? Except, I can't read them. Just turn the dial a little more. What you have to understand is that sheet of paper isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you, you see the paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Wow, really? The x-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength of only 0.05 microns. It breaks cards down into layers, so when it can only show what, uh, what's written on that layer. I'm not entirely following you. What's good- what- what good is it if you can't read anything? That's why we go on a step two. Try rubbing the image a bit, if you would. Rubbing, like going over the image with left stick uh, while holding X. There, that fixes the image on the screen. Now turn the dial just a little. Good, now you can rub this image to fix it too. Hey, I get it. We just keep doing this until we get the right of the whole thing. Exactly, not bad. Neat, let's do some more. It looks like it's a number. Okay, this is it. Zero, zero, sixteen. Try again. Lottery? Why would he keep a seven-year-old lottery ticket that said try again? Okay, let's print this one out. Hmm, does this mean I have to buy another one to win? Well, it's Emma's ticket. Her, buy another one. It's okay, there's no need. See, this is the true hidden power of my weapon. Neat, huh? Now let's uh, try it out on the real thing, shall we? Oh, so now we're testing it on this? Oh, it's a letter.
I'm Drew, um, a uh, Misham. I've deposited the one hundred thousand dollars, and this is designed. Please send me a receipt once you've confirmed transfer. Uh, Why would he be sending hundred thousand dollars to somebody? Yeah, it's pretty much readable. What uh, do I need to still do a mini game, Mr. Drew Misham? I've deposited the one hundred thousand in the designated account. Please send a re receipt uh, once you've confirmed the transfer. Why would he keep this letter? Okay, let's print this one out. Someone deposited $100,000 in the Mr. Misham's account. His paintings must be really valuable. Maybe it wasn't over paintings. There's another page in there. Care to take a look? You bet I do. Uh, I bet you're gonna read some uh, uh, someone's mail. Uh, you might as well read it all. Here goes with the second page, then. I do actually like these mini games. I don't know how how people feel in the Ace Attorney games about these mini games, but I actually do like these. Um. Find the papers and send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within five days. I need not remind you to speak of this to no one. What is this about? Okay, let's print this one out. Sign the papers and send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. I need not remind you to speak of this to no one. So it was a letter about payment for one of his paintings? Why all the secrecy though? And what? Why was this letter the only one in here? It's seven years old, right? Maybe it had some special significance to him. Well, Emma? Well, indeed. She knows something she's not telling us. Looks like she's keeping mum about it. Found the victim's de uh, desk drawer contains two sheets of writing paper. So Emma, I was wondering. What's the story about this reporter that came here for the uh, story of the night of the crime? Ah, I'm afraid I can't tell you because he's going to be a witness tomorrow. I hear- oh no. Um, 
I thought so. I'll never forget that face. But what was his name? Oh, right. Brussel. Spark Brussel? He's after a scoop to sell to the papers. So a reporter comes for an interview with a painter. His first interview ever, and that night he's killed. Se seems strange to you? Really strange. It does raise a few questions. I'd like to speak with this reporter if I could. Well, I hear he's on the beat today, too. He said something about covering a magician. Magician? Well, if it's not true, see, that leaves only one other person. It, it wasn't valid grammary by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. He's got some big show lined up, I hear. So he's out, interviewing Valen Grammary. Looks like I'll be heading out to this Coliseum again sooner than I thought. Here, I'll give you that reporter's card if you want. The business card reads, Spark Brussel Freelance Journalist. I guess you gotta have a good business card if you work freelance. Really, what's this? A camera lens finder? Do reporters take photos too? I guess if he's freelance, he'd have to. Maybe you should try being a prosecutor and a defense attorney. You, you'll always win. <laughs> Why don't I become a rock star too while I'm at it? Yeah, I like Clavier. Top dollar information. Let's see for anything we missed in this room before we leave. Look at all these paints, Apollo. There's so many. He's got like 20 ki kinds of red. We could repaint your suit, Apollo. How about uh, this shade of green? That'll be enough of that, thanks. What is this thing? What is all this equipment here for? It doesn't look very artistic, really. Get everything from a laugh to a laser cutter. Sorry about my light, guys. And I don't know why it keeps flickering like that. Uh, looks like he was ready to work on metals uh, and wood, wood too. Though his equipment is a bit old, to tell the truth. Why would a painter need all this? From the dust, I'd say he hasn't used this stuff for years. This corner doesn't fit with the rest of the studio. Oh, do you think I could borrow this? I want to cut a quarter in, in half to make a trick coin. This is a crime scene, Trucy. But these cost like 50 bucks at the magic shop. Yeah, I'm suspecting he's not just a painter, he does something else. Is this desk for painting, Apollo? That would be drafting table. Drafting. Basically, it's a tool for making precise diagrams. Wow, painting is harder than I thought. Why would a painter need a drafting table? Is he an architect too? Let's take a look, closer look at the desk here. Oh, we've already looked at everything here. Uh, wait, we haven't checked this out. Is this a journal? Wow, talk about a clue. Let's read it. W what is it, Apollo? He didn't write the name of the killer, did he? It's new. He didn't write a single line. Ugh, you had me going for a while there. Wonder how he gets groceries if he never leaves his house. October 7, Sunshine Coliseum. Woohoo, this is it, Apollo. The place where magic and dreams conver converge. This a while ago is the place where murder and nightmares converged, yep. Let's go say hi to Uncle Valent. What about the case? Wah ha 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 Only performer laughs like that. The young uh, Miss Trucy. How often I hoped we'd meet again only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. Hee hee, Uncle Valent, how's it going? I'm, I'm glad to see you, too. Of course you are. Humility is definitely not one of his stronger traits. Well, Miss Trucy, how does the day find you? If you'd come to give me flowers, do it after the show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, but it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness miracles, such as the ones I shall perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. The world will watch in wonderment as uh, Magnifi's illusions are reborn. Here on stage, by my hand. Big magic show. 
Everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true that the Grammar Rain Miracle is back after a seven year absence? Miss Trucy, I must apologize. This show and this honor should have been his. Wait, seven years? That's when the, the their show played last time, and that guy had had a card, had a had an envelope of letter from seven years ago. This show and this honor should have been his. And I think Trucy's father disappeared seven years ago too. Daddy. My co-magician in training, Zach Remory, if that terrible thing hadn't, it's okay. Your father was a great magician, Trucy. If he were alive, then I, Valent Grammarie, would have been proud to stand upon this stage as an assistant. Thanks, Uncle Valent. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. I think we get to see the great Magnifi's illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? My mentor, the Magnifi, uh, Magnificent Magnifi Grammarie, was a true deity among magicians. A creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions to defy their very imaginations. I was so little when I last saw one, but I still remember his shows. He did willies in a sports car off through the air above the audience, and then sped off to outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing the memory was a bit embellished. <laughs> for seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to match his. An heir to the Grammary Troopy's um, secrets, it falls to me to provide one. It is my god-given destiny. Um, yes, you nameless face who speaks for the nameless masses, how can I help you? If the world was waiting, why did you hold off for seven long years? Hmm. It appears the lad is uninformed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as law, which governs our land. I have, though I'm not sure it qualifies as magic. The performance of Magnifi's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it for seven years. Seven years. That phrase sure likes to pop up, doesn't it? And why, why was that? A little matter called performance rights, Miss Trucy. Performance rights? Can you tell us about these performance rights? Magnifi's magic relied on an incredibly innovative idea, a trick, if you will. That trick was considered his property, and as such was protected by property loss. Intellectual property, maybe. Magnifi knew this and bequeathed um, it in his will. To one person. You mean, him? Yes. Miss Trucy, it was your father. Zach Grammary was the inheritor of the Grammary miracle. Daddy. Yet, as you well know, he is gone. He disappeared suddenly, seven years ago. I think I see where this story is going. Once a person is classified missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased, correct? In all absoluteness, uh, those rolled up sleeves conceal your uh, competence well, young man. That certain period of time of which you speak. Seven years. Curious that envelope had anything to do with that, too. Ah. Yes, Miss Trucy. Though it pains me to say it, this past spring, April, to be precise, was the time your father was legally declared deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty mentor Magnifi passed to me. This was, in fact, stipulated in the will by Magnifi himself. The thing is, though, is that property rights are mostly on, like, you know, inventions, you know, stuff that people create. You know, they get a patent, it's their, it's their item. But for magic tricks, I don't think that there, because there's just so many magic tricks out there and so many magicians do the same tricks. I don't know if you can actually patent a magic trick. I don't know if you could actually do that. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. But I don't I don't think you could, because it's 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 not like an item, it's like an act. That's what it is. Um Is that how it works, Apollo? Yeah, it's called a death and absence. It's he uh, he's declared missing permanently. Daddy. Present. Let's present that, uh... So, a journalist was here in a story. All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. All pens seek to commit its mysteries to paper. Um, his name was Russell. 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 I think he remembers him. He doesn't look too happy about it. Russell. That cloying s uh, smell of mint when he smiles, yes. Um, could you tell us more about him? What did he want? A man by the name called uh by that name called me uh called on me just now, just now. Balance vision is always towards uh, tomorrow. Balance uh, feet step uh always forward. That is all. That's all. You're very confusing. I am to perform a big magic show. Yes, I wanted someone to cover it. 
Yet, he had ears only for that incident. That incident? In any case, I requested that that rapacious reporter remove himself. So if pa Painter has died, what of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of Grammarie. Well, a man has died. A man's been murdered. I think that's much more important than your magic show. Uncle Valent, do you know where that reporter went? I recommended he visit the uh, place popular with penalized perpetrators. The detention center. He was a rude individual. Might I see that card? Ah, uh, sure. He would tear apart my respectability. I will tear apart him. Oh, here it comes, Apollo. Uncle Valen's big magic trick. Is he going to fix the card? I'm not sure if that qualifies big magic. What happened to the big magic? Ha ha ha. Ha. It is not more miraculous uh, for it to stay ripped. He must have really not liked that journalist. October 7th Detention Center, Visitor's Room. Ah, you're here to see Ver Vera Misham? Yes, that's right. She's in the medical office at the moment. Medical office? Is she okay? She's just lying down, said she didn't feel so good. I'm sorry, but I can't allow any meetings at the moment. Most annoying client ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guess we should come back. Hmm. That challenges it? You want me to make that disappear? Uh, no, 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 thanks. Mm. Oh, the ticket. Uh, great, I, yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me about this. Aha, why? That bears the Grammarie seal. Hmm. Uncle Valent? Is something wrong? Brucey, where did you get this? Huh? Um, Daddy gave it to me. Your... You, 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 daddy? My partner, Zach Grammarie? No, 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 no. My other daddy, Phoenix Wright. Why is he panicking about that envelope? Why now? Why would your Lord Daddy... Lord Daddy, that's kind of stretching the whole archaic thing a bit. I think he knows something about her father's disappearance seven years ago. That signature upon the back, do you recognize it? That belongs to none other than Zach Grammarie. What? Daddy signed this? Might I be so bold as to open it? I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. Hmm. Ah, ah. What's in this envelope, I wonder? Now the time has come when I must return to make my prestigious preparations. By your leave, Miss Trucy. Thanks, Uncle Valent. I don't trust him, yeah. Three days from now, make ready for a miracle. I don't trust him. What do you think that uh, journalist was after? And why did Valent react like that to the, this envelope? I think it's time to pay the detention center another visit. Yeah, so... So he, um... He knows something about the disappearance of, of her father, that's what I think. I think I hear what you're saying. We're all doing it for the money. End quote. No, 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 not at all. Looks like someone's already meeting here. Maybe that reporter. Hey there. How you doing? Uh, who might you be? Ah, sorry. Uh, we didn't know someone was already here. I'm Apollo Justice, attorney at law. Talk about nervous monkey. Uh, you, you're Justice, you. You know me. Do I know you? Of course I know you. Stares down witness on stand till they spill beans. End quote. That, that's not true. What's he writing? Are you a reporter by any chance? Ooh, you, you're Trucy. Hey, am I famous? Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Brucey Wright hates carrying a bag. Puts everything she owns in her panties. End quote. Eek, uh, that's not- that's so not true. Just hold on to your breeches there. I'll wrap up this interview in a jiffy. Interview? So, guard, I think I know what's going on here. Guarding rooms is my life. What else could I possibly, uh, need? End quote. No, how many times do I have to tell you this? Look, I've got a work to do. Um, you deal with him. Um, did you come here to interview the guard? Oh, we. Oui, what a pickle. Accused wouldn't talk. Had to interview someone or go plumb crazy. End quote. Huh. I should have guessed. Where's my manners? Name's Brussel, Spark Brussel. I'm not picky. Journalist uh, just clo uh, closes eyes, writes, end quote. Oh, man. What's that nauseating strong mint sm smell every time he grins? Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what thrilling is. Wild rump uh, through crossroads or mayhem madness, end quote. I can see that. He's writing something again. Well, if he's a reporter, maybe he knows something. So, Mr. Brussel, you're a journalist. Ah, uh, me, look. Let me state one thing for the record here. Y yes I'm the interviewer, you understand? Yeah. I'm the one asking the questions here. End quote. Okay, this guy's getting on my nerves. For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Well, I think he probably does. Exactly. I knew you'd understand. Huh? So, the night of the murder, you were at the Drew studio. Who, me? Look, let me state one thing for the record. Y yes I may look calm and collected, but I'm busy, real busy, always on the road. Journalist always buys one-way ticket, never looks back. End quote. I can understand that philosophy, but... You want to know the, the thing about one-way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. All because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. True enough. But don't they give normal tickets anyways, too? Exactly. See, it's the same thing. What is? Uh... So you want, uh, you went to do a story on Drew Misham, and he never had a story done about him before. That's right. Look, let me state one thing for the record here. W what? I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. What tipped me off to Drew? Why did it interview in the first place? Well, yes. Look, it's like... Oh, I've got it. Say, there's this burger uh, joint with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy is going to tell me where the, he's got it? At the supermarket, maybe? Exactly, see? That's what I'm talking about. I think I may have actually understood that one. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. Walls have ears, especially glass walls with speakers. End quote. Right. Guess we'll leave, then. Ah, but since you're here... Might as well tell you a tidbit of news I saw, just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us. Just for the heck of it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I had seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup. When an article in a tabloid caught my eye. That famous oil painting stolen from art dealer's gallery, end quote, I believe it was. An oil painting. Happens every day, right? Uh, but I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. Someone stole an oil painting of a giant peach. It's the same thing that we had. Journalists can smell scoop better than burgers. End quote. Ah, right. Let me go on the record here. Y yes? I know what you're going to say. Russell, take this. Right. I don't think so. Look, buddy, I write brilliantly columns about it, one thing. And that's food. Try to understand. What could he possibly be writing? He didn't listen to a word I said. Well, what do we have here? It looks like a person thinking about something. Maybe they're worried? Like, what should I have uh, for supper, a hot dog or a hamburger? You know, I've always wondered about that. 
Why is there supper and dinner? Are they different meals or the same thing? Maybe that's what this person's thinking about. Alright, let me go on the... Oh, and Grammary destroyed the reporter's business card. Who? Man, that's just so creepy. Yeah, he's he's really creeping me out. October 7th, Drew Studio. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I wanted to check with you. What What's with that scary face you're making? And what's with the I know, uh, I know something, but I'm not gonna uh, telling you the face you got going, on, Emma. This painting came from behind that dresser. Ah, uh, yes. So it was stolen. No. I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit about this? I suppose it's it's what you think. Drew Mishem was a forger. So he makes fake paintings? A forger? So what exactly is a forger? Well, basically it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes in other words. Fakes. Copies of an original. Exact copies so precise you can't tell them apart. Well, why not just photocopy them? The big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as the real article. It's a crime, of course. So Drew Mishem was... A criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries. To supplement his work in, in illustration, I guess. I see. Actually, that's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. But not in the case of a forgery. Not necessarily, anyway. You know, what the finished product is going to look like after all. Oh yeah, I guess you would. That's why I brought this. I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of the finished pieces. I get it now. Not that I really needed to go to such lengths seeing as how one of the paintings was only half-finished anyways. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Misham's rough sketches, kind of like what he was drawing when he thought no one was looking. True. That would be interesting, and uh, may be valuable for our case. You should try uh, buttering her up, Apollo. Flattery will get you everywhere, they say. Hmm. Maybe I should... Maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. Um, I kind of wanted to see the rough sketch under this painting. I was wondering if your tool there might do the trick. Okay, fine. Uh, just this time, though. Let's check it out. So that's why he was getting paid $100,000. He, he makes fakes.
That's some kind of tower? What is that? playing a guitar okay let's print this one out on fire wait what the heck wow he really blows the finished painting isn't anything like the rough device like mine didn't exist until recently he probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted uh, to for the rough what do you mean well in the past you can only analyze the composition of a rough sketch Composition. In other words, the traces of charcoal between paint and canvas. So you could tell if there had been a rough sketch, but not what it looked like. Ah, I think I follow you. So in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished paint. Some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely, then do a completely new painting on top of that. So I was right, they paint over it. So Mr. Mischamp was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them. Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of odd. You're awfully silent, all of a sudden, Apollo. You think we could check out one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this detection stuff, don't you? No, is it the noodle stand? It was Clavier's... Clavier's guitar being on fire. And now it's the noodle stand? You've gotta be kidding me. Let's print this one out. Man. Looks creepy like an alien or a monster or something pulling the stand. This one too. What's wrong, Apollo? He looks so serious all of a sudden. Um, you think I could just look at the last uh, of these? Fine by me. Knock yourself out. Is it? It's gonna be the Shady Smith murder. This is going to be the Shady Smith murder, I bet you. Thank you. 
It is the Shady Smith murder. It's poker. What the heck is all this? I hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. Uh, you're sure your device isn't leaking some kind of strange radiation? Trucy, look at these three sketches. Do you notice anything? It's the first three cases. Ah! Th 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 there! Now you're both white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I worked on. What? The murder in the poker room at the Boris and Bowl Club. The dead man pulling the noodle stand. And then... The events that transpired during the Gavinor's concert. What could it mean? How could he have drawn those things? And why? That's why uh, what I want to know. Wait, is Drew Misham your father? Give me a break. Does that even uh, seem even remotely possible to you? I never ever heard of, of any Drew Misham before. I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But th these... There were my cases drawn on his... Yeah. Uh, on his canvas. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who uh, was this Drew Misham, and wh what did he have to do with me? Well, now we're gonna find... This is getting interesting. I gotta say, you guys were right when you're saying this is the most interesting case in the game, but... Like, when I saw that flaming guitar at first, I didn't really think it meant anything, but then the second I saw the noodle stand, I was like, oh no. And then I knew that it was gonna be the, the poker murder at the end. So the first three murders were in the pictures. Why exactly? Why was he drawing that? That's, that's not a coincidence. But thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, um, do drop a like, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.